Hello, and welcome to Converge Church. We're so glad you joined us today. Today's worship experience will begin momentarily. If you're a first time guest with us, we are honored to have you here. Please feel free to stop by the Connection Center in the lobby or ask one of our team members if you have any questions. We're here to serve you. And if you're a returning guest or you're part of our Converge family, we'd like to say welcome back. Once again, thank you for being our guest today and enjoy the rest of the worship experience. In the midst of uncertainty, our faith can struggle. Our walk becomes labored, our heart heavy. There's something about the unknown which seems to weaken us. It drains our patience and blurs our focus. Yet in the middle of everything stands a faithful God a God who's not swayed by the struggle, who isn't moved by the winds of chaos, a God who remains faithful even when our faith is fragile. It seems more difficult than ever to not worry about tomorrow, yet that's exactly what God has asked us to do. For when we cast our burdens on Him, the troubles of the moment begin to fade. When we trust the plans He has for us, our fear begins to subside. When we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, our focus becomes consumed by clarity. Yes, we are in the midst of uncertainty, but we can be certain of one thing, God is faithful, and that is more than enough for tomorrow. Good evening, Converge Nation, wherever you're watching from, from around the nation or around the world. I would be remiss if I didn't, first of all, wish you and yours a happy, blessed, and prosperous new year. Brand new chapter, new beginnings, fresh start, clean slate. In fact, we believe that this year, in 2022, that there is more. In fact, say that with me. There is more more. Now put a couple of exclamation marks on the end of that. Say it emphatically with conviction. There is more. More than you and I could ever ask or imagine. More than we've seen. More than we've heard. More of God than we have discovered or even experienced. More than what's in our hand. Listen, we're excited about all that God will do this year in 2022 in our lives personally in our church corporately and just in the body of christ that there is more that we will not be limited to what we know and what we've experienced but that we will lean in and press in to what god desires to do next in our lives in fact to that end uh, we've been praying earnestly. We've been praying fervently uh, every day. And we've, we've invited you to join us every single day during our fast forward uh, 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 fasting and prayer initiative to join us every day at 3.20 p.m. wherever you are, whether it's East Coast, Central Time, Mountain Time, Pacific Time, whether it's Zulu Time, whether it's Greenwich Mean Time, wherever you are at 3.20 p.m. every single day, we're inviting you to join us as we lift up our boldest, most audacious, most radical, crazy faith prayers to the Lord, according to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, that declares that our God is able. Come on, somebody. He's not just able, but he's also willing 
to do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything you would, and I could ever ask or imagine. The NIV rendering of that verse declares that our God is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine, more than we could ever conjure up in our imagination, in our thoughts, in our dreams. So every single day we're inviting you to tap into the more of God, the there is more of God at 320 during our 21 days of prayer and fasting. And that is our prayer for you, Converge Nation, that it will not just be a slogan, that it will not just be a cute saying, but it would actually be your experience and your reality in 2022. Amen and amen. Listen, this morning we're going to dive into the word of God together. But before we do that, just want to just revisit uh, some communication that went out from our church uh, earlier this week in reference to and in regards to our decision, our decision to suspend in-person worship experiences in the month of January. Uh, one of the things that I'm very particular about is my responsibility to you as your pastor. And in all that we and uh, Wendy, Pastor Wendy and I do as your pastors together, uh, in all that we do, we want to be responsible, not reckless, uh, so that we're going to make decisions that are informed by the wisdom of God. We're always going to seek wise counsel and prayerfully consider all the decisions that we make. In our decision to suspend in-person worship gatherings, Converge Live uh, was a direct result of that. Uh, number one, because of the the, the spike in uh, uh, COVID positive cases, uh, positive COVID cases in our community, but also in our church family. In fact, uh, on my way here to record today's message, I got a text, a group text from one of our men who just tested positive for COVID. Uh, it's not something we take lightly. Two years later, over 24 months later, we're still dealing with the effects of COVID-19. And it is my duty as your pastor and as a servant of God to be responsible, not reckless, to walk in the wisdom of God. Uh, and, and But again, then there's some who argue, who argue, well, Pastor Ray, you need to be a man of faith and power. Listen, I have pastor friends uh, who are in their graves today because they made their congregations and they made COVID-19 their faith experiment. Using wisdom is not a lack of faith. Amen. So we will always walk in faith, but we will walk in faith in the wisdom of God. Uh, in fact, one of the ways we define wisdom here at Converge Church is that wisdom is the ability to make finer distinctions, not just between good and evil, which is easy, right? It's usually easy to discern, to decipher between what's good and what's evil. Sometimes it's more difficult to discern to make that distinction between what is good and what is best. Uh, I think it would be good for us to continue to gather in person, but would that be best? Uh, would that be best? We always have to make decisions in reference to the risk and the reward. And so we made that decision because of the spike in the COVID numbers in our community and also in our community of faith. Secondly, uh, because of our bench strength. And let me stop for a moment and commend all the amazing servant leaders who have made life-giving ministry possible at Converge Church. Listen, we've had less, and let me say this again, this is no exaggeration, less than 20% for those who subscribe to the 80-20 rule. We have had less than 20% carry more than 80% of the burden as it relates to the week-to-week -week, uh, behind-the-scenes logistics that make Converge Live and Converge Online possible. And I think this is an opportunity for them to get some respite, for them to, to, to rest and recover, and for all of us to consider how we can contribute once we resume in-person gatherings. Uh, listen, great churches are not build, built on the sacrifices of a few, but they are built on the commitment of the many. And so we're, we're asking you uh, during this hiatus, uh, in the month of January to prayerfully consider how you can contribute your time and your talent, but also your treasure to make life-giving ministry possible here at Converge Church. Because ultimately what we do in the kingdom, for the kingdom, in his name, is a team effort. And so we invite you to join the less than 10% who have been carrying 80% of the weight of ministry at Converge Church. We also invite you to continue faithfully in your giving that your time off from in-person worship should not impact your generosity. 
In fact, let me pause for a second and give this give you this public service announcement and to commend you for your generosity in 2021. In fact, 2021, in terms of our generosity, not what we received, but what we gave, what we sold into missions and benevolence was the most we've ever done, just under $30,000. We gave last year in 2021 to missions and benevolence. Missions in terms of our local and global partners, uh, Living Water Ministries, Matt and Angela Catanella in Uganda, Pastor Caleb Doma, uh, Metro Harvest Church, The Church Without Walls in Liberia, and several other ministries in Liberia and Sierra Leone. We sold into to work that's going on in Brazil. Uh, man, listen, I could give you the list, but then also locally with Hope's Door, uh, one of our local missions partners, but over and above that, the benevolence, the ability to meet pressing, urgent emergency needs within our faith community, uh, rent payments and emergency financial assistance and, and so on and so forth. Listen, we could not have done it without you. And so I say all of that to say when you give, when you sow, and as you continue to be generous, come on somebody, it allows us not only to impact our world, but it allows us to impact our city and our community of faith as well. So when you sow into Converge Church, you're sowing into the threefold vision that God has given us, Jesus, people, and purpose. Amen. So listen, I'm excited about all that God desires to do in us and through us in 2020. Two, I know it's going to be transformational. It's going to be our best yet, year yet. It's going to be our best year to date. That's where Pastor Wendy and I have set our expectation. Listen to me. The atmosphere of expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. I'll say that again. The atmosphere of expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. And that's why Jesus would often say to those who came to him, petitioning him for miracles, he would always say, be it unto you according to your faith. And so this year in 2022, our expectors have been raised, come on somebody, to the there is more level. But listen, we're going to dive into the word together as we look to our anchor text uh, for this series, which is lifted from Luke chapter five, beginning at verse number one. In fact, I'm going to revisit some of the thoughts from our New Year's Eve live experience uh, that we did with our friends, uh, Derek and Ilya Golden and Pastor Joshua Campbell, Derek and Ilya of Amazing Church right here in McKinney, and then Pastor Joshua Campbell of God's Nation Church in Denton. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you would, uh, to Luke chapter 5, again, which is our anchor text for today's message. If I had to choose a title for today's message, it would simply be this, there is more. Week one, give Jesus the boat. Give Jesus the boat. Listen to me, if we're going to experience the more of God, if we're going to experience the abundance of God, what we must first establish, what we must first settle is the right priorities. In the kingdom of God, there are things that are sequential and there are things that are simultaneous. If we're going to experience the more of God, it's critically important for us to establish, first of all, the things that are sequential. They must happen in a certain order. In French uh, uh, culinary training, there is a phrase, three words, mise en place, mise en place, which simply means everything in its place. And let me just uh, say this to you, Converge Church. If God uh, does not have his rightful place in our lives, if we don't surrender the boat of our lives, the boat of our decision making, the boat of our pursuits to God, everything else that we do will be out of order because the sequence is broken. So if we're going to experience, listen to me, the more of God that God has promised, we first of all have to give Jesus the boat. You know, Tyler Perry uh, said it this way, sometimes the quickest way to victory is surrender. I know that most of us want victory in our lives. Most of, what, most of us want the best of God's uh, 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 gifts and his purpose and his plan for our lives. The struggle is sometimes in our surrender. 
And may I submit to you that this year, in 2022, God desires to give us the very best of what he has planned and purposed and ordained for us. The way we access that, the way we tap into that is when we yield ourselves and submit ourselves implicitly and completely to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You've got to, listen, touch your neighbor and say, give him the boat. Amen. The boat is representative. It is a metaphor for your life. The complete surrender of all that you are, all that you have, all that you desire, and all that you hope for. And we'll discover this principle. Notice it is a principle, an immutable, irrefutable principle of God's word that when we put God first, <laughs> when we give God our first and our best, he will redeem the rest. Because you and I can never outgive God. Give him the boat. Touch your neighbor again right there in the comfort of your living room, in the comfort of your media room. In fact, in the chat, why don't you write those words? Give him the boat. Come on, somebody. In fact, let's pray now and dive into the word together. Father, we thank you that your word will go forth unhindered, unfettered. It will minister life to your people. It will not return unto you void. It will only prosper in the thing whereunto it is sent. And I thank you, God, that you make us faithful doers of your word, not hearers only. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen and amen. The text picks up in verse 1 of Luke Chapter number five, with these words, so it was, as the multitudes pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake Gennesaret, and he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. As I read the text and reread the text and re-examined the text, what I saw in those few verses were three needs. You say, Pastor Ray, what are you talking about? Three needs that are about to intersect. Three needs that are about to converge. The first need is the need that the multitudes had for the word of God. Listen to me. If there's ever a time that you and I needed to lean in and press into the word of God, it is now. Jesus said in Matthew 4, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Job said it this way. He said, I have esteemed, I have elevated, I have amplified your word above my necessary bread. More than my physical sustenance, I need your word. And the people discovered that when Jesus thought, it taught, it was liberating, it set them free, it encouraged them, it lifted them. So the multitudes pressed against Jesus at the Lake Gennesaret because they had a need to hear his word. Listen to me, I don't know who you are, but this year, I pray that God by his spirit will stir in you a desire for more of his word. And the promise we have from Matthew chapter 6 is simply this. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. The fact that these people had this need for God's word speaks to the fact that there was a spiritual deficit. There was a desperation for more of God. And I pray that this year, that God will reset and recalibrate your priorities around a desire for his word. That was need number one. Need number two was Simon Peter and his partners in their fishing business who had toiled all night. They had worked hard and caught nothing. And there are those who are grappling with the effort and the hard work and the grind that is producing very little in your life. Somebody this morning has a need for breakthrough. Somebody listening to me this morning has a need for a divine turnaround. Somebody listening to me this morning needs their circumstances to change and to shift for good. In the text, we see not only the people's need for the word of God, but we see Simon and Peter who had a very bad day. And may I suggest that it may have been a very bad day in a very bad season in their business. 
But there's a third need that we often ignore. And that is the need that Jesus had. <laughs> I'll say that again. The need that Jesus had. He said, Pastor Ray, what are you talking about? We often ignore this fact. That even though God is sovereign, even though God is self-sufficient, in fact, his name is El Shaddai. He is the all-sufficient one. In his sovereignty, God has decided, God has ordained that what he does in the earth, he will do in partnership, in tandem with humanity. Even though he has the omnipotence, he has the power, and he has the sovereignty, he answers to no one. He could do whatever he wanted to do, whenever he wanted to do it, by divine design and by divine prerogative he has chosen to do what he does in the earth in partnership with ordinary men just like you and like me and so Jesus comes to Gennesaret the people have a need for his word uh, Simon Peter has a need for a breakthrough in his business and Jesus has a need for a platform to minister more effectively to the people who are pressing against him to minister more profoundly and minister more effectively to the multitudes. And so how does this need or how are these needs, this trifecta, this trinity of needs, how will these needs be met? You know, in fact, I'm reminded of uh, the week of Christ's passion when he sends his disciples across town. And he said, listen, go into that village. And when you go into that village, you will see a colt, a donkey that has never been ridden. And when they ask you, what are you doing? Tell them this. Uh, in fact, he said it this way. He says, loose it and let it go. And when they ask, what are you doing? Tell them the Lord has need of it. The Lord has need of it. Notice the word of the Lord. What if in 2022, God is saying there are things I desire to do in the earth. There are things I desire to do in and through Converge Church. There are things I desire to do in the nation. There are things I desire to do in the world. But I need you. That's it. Listen, loose it. And when anyone asks you what you're doing, tell them the Lord has need of it. There's a third need. And the third need is the need that the Lord has of you. I want you to stop and consider that for a second. Imperfect you, broken you, second guessing you, insecure you, unsure you. The Lord has need of you. The Lord has need of you. And if we're going to do things in the proper order, in the proper sequence, listen, you have to understand that the God first life is the catalyst for the God blessed life. Ah, I hope you heard that. The God first life is the catalyst, is the conduit for the God blessed life. When we take all that we are and we take all that we have and surrender it to Jesus, when we take our doubts and we take our disappointments, when we take the bruising and the beating and the trauma of 2020 and the, the, the disappointments and the discouragement that came with 2021 and we take all of it, listen to me, not just the bad, but the good, the bad and the ugly and surrender it all to him. And say, Lord, take me just as I am, without pretense, without falsehood, with my frustrations, with my questions. And use me as only you can. Glory to God. Three needs. These needs uh, are about to intersect. Because notice what the text says. It says uh, that they stood by the lake of Nesaret, but Jesus saw two boats standing by the lake. And Jesus saw in those two boats an opportunity, a platform for him to amplify and magnify his message. You know the physics of it, that sound travels faster and louder on waves. Listen to me, 
Jesus, in getting into Peter's boat, was being afforded an opportunity to meet the needs of the multitudes so that they could hear God's word unhindered and uninhibited. You know who met that need? It was Simon Peter. There is a convergence that happened in this moment. A need that the people had was met in Jesus preaching the word. But a need that Jesus had was met in Peter supplying the boat. They all go together. They all go together. There's absolutely nothing about your life that happens in isolation. In fact, when God created you and God anointed you and he gifted you and he appointed you, he did it because he created you to be his solution to a problem that exists in the earth. And the only way those needs are met, those desires are fulfilled is when you give him the boat. I'm talking about your very life and everything about your life surrendered to him. Because listen, listen, listen. What was a moment of doubt and disappointment for Simon Peter is now about to be the moment, listen to me, a destiny-defining moment. Oh, let me say that again. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. We experience the more of God. We experience the fullness of God. We experience the abundance of God. We will experience the increase of God when we allow our doubts and disappointments to become destiny-defining moments because we gave Jesus the boat. I'll say that again. When you give Jesus the boat of your life, of your dreams, of your desires, of your disappointments, of your disillusionment, whatever it is, again, good, bad, or ugly, he can take those moments of surrender and he can make them destiny-defining moments. Give Jesus the boat. If we're going to set the right tone and tenor for 2022, it must be from a posture of surrender and submission to God. That's the pattern we see in the text. That's the pattern we see in the text. And listen to me, it's time out for straddling the fence. It's time out for lukewarm Christianity. It's time out. It's time out for that foolishness. Listen to me. It's time to pursue God and give him everything that you have and everything that you are. And listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 6. He said, if you and I would simply seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all these things, all these things that concern us. In fact, Jesus said, listen, those are things that the Gentiles are concerned about. The unbeliever. But he said, listen, if you put me first, mise en place, if your life has the proper order, the proper sequence, and the proper priorities, all these things will be added. Notice, they will be added. Without Jesus in the right place, we pursue these things. We go after these things. We fight for these things. We vie for these things. We compete for these things. But notice what happens when Jesus is in his proper place. These things that we once pursued begin to pursue us. They follow after us. And that's why he said, listen to me, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, there is Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, he said, if you will simply diligently hearken, if you would listen to obey, if you would listen and obey my commandments, these promises, listen to me, will run after you and they will overtake you. Notice that the blessing and the promise pursues you when your life is rightly prioritized and rightly aligned with God. So while the Gentiles are running after all these things and grinding for these things and fighting for these things and competing for these things and killing and conniving and manipulating these things, the Lord says that you and I will simply posture ourselves where we pursue him, his kingdom, his righteousness, then all these things. All these things will be added unto us. Give him the boat. Why? The Lord has need of you. Just as he had need 
of that donkey, just as he had need of that colt, just as he had need of Simon Peter's boat, he has need of you. And notice what the text said. Uh, but the fishermen had gone from them and they were washing their nets. Symbolic of unrealized, unfulfilled potential. We've toiled all night. We've caught nothing. Man, it's about time to throw in the towel, to call it a day. And you know what? We're just going to give this thing a shot, another shot tomorrow and just see, see where the chips fall, see where this thing lands. I don't know if you've ever been there. I don't know if you're in that place right now. But the word of the Lord to you today is give him the boat. Because when you and I see what we've lost, Jesus sees what we have left. And what we have left in the master's hand is all he needs. Because what you and I have may not be much, but it can surely and it will surely multiply by his touch. You might be saying to yourself, it's too late. My ship has sailed. <laughs> I'm over the hill. Listen, give him what you have left. Give him what you have left. Give him what you have left. Your disappointments, the delays, the denials, the frustrations, give it all to him. Because when Jesus gets in the boat, he assumes all of that. He, listen, Jesus saw the boats standing by the lake. He saw it. He knew their struggles. He knew what they were working through emotionally. And he still said, give me the boat. That's a word for somebody this morning. If that's for you this morning, just type in the chat. That's for me, Pastor. Come on, somebody. The Lord is about to get in your boat and he's about to, listen, transform and shift everything for the better because there, say it with me, is, come on, more. There is more. All right, notice the text. Uh, but the fishermen had gone from their nets, uh, had gone from them and were washing the nets. Notice, then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes. Notice, in this moment, there is a convergence of these two needs. Jesus' need for a platform to preach the gospel and the people's need to hear the gospel were all met in Simon Peter's generosity. Simon Peter's willingness to give up the boat. I'm wondering this morning, what's on the other side of your obedience to God in 2022? Your simple obedience to God. And that, that's why, I, listen to me, that's why I said on New Year's Eve that your understanding can wait. Your obedience can't. Your understanding can wait. Your obedience can't. And in the midst of his disappointment, he gives Jesus his boat. Listen, I'm talking to you, even though it's painful, even though it hurts, even though you may have faith wounds, even though you may have big questions, for God, give him the boat. Give him the boat. Here's why, as I close. I, I, I love that. I love those words. Uh, it may not seem like a whole lot to you, but it, it matters to me. Because we live in a day and time when there are a lot of people who feel invisible. Do you even know I'm here? Do you hear me? Do you see me? Do you care? I want to speak for a moment to that person who is in that place right now. On this day in 2022, wherever you are, let me just, let me just encourage you and let me assure you that our God sees you. In fact, the psalmist said it this way in Psalm 8. He said, when I consider your heavens and the work of your hands... The moon and the stars which you have set in place. When I consider the vast expanse of the universe, of all that you govern and oversee, of all over which you reign supreme. He says, God, the galaxies, the stars, the universe, the planets, 
There's so much, God, within your purview. But when I consider the vast expanse of your kingdom, of your universe, the thing that boggles my mind, the thing that perplexes me, the thing that leaves me bewildered, the thing that leaves me flabbergasted is simply this, and he poses this question. What is man hey, that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you care for him. Listen, the psalmist was saying, God, there's so many things you could be busy about. There's so many things that could and should preoccupy you. There's so many responsibilities you could assume holding this whole world together. But God, <laughs> I keep coming back to this one overarching question. What is man that you are mindful of him? And what is man that you care for him? And may I submit to you this morning that Jesus sees you. He sees your empty boat and he sees your empty net. Because the God we serve is mindful and he cares. Ah, He's mindful of you and he cares about you. Listen to me. Uh, the word mindful in the Hebrew simply means to recollect, to remember, to bring to mind. I pray today in Jesus name that there would be a divine remembrance, a divine recollection that God once again would be brought, that you once again will be brought to mind before God. A God who sees, a God who knows, and a God who cares. He sees. Uh, uh, Psalm 121 declares uh, that we can lift up our eyes to the hills from whence cometh our help. That all of our help, listen to me, all of your help in 2022 comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. And the scripture declares that he neither slumbers nor sleeps. He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. And we, the church, the body of Christ, have become that spiritual Israel. He neither slumbers nor sleeps concerning you. And because he sees, because he sees, beloved, he also knows. He is not ignorant of what you're going through. He is not distant and aloof from what you're experiencing. In fact, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16 confirm that Jesus not only sees, but he knows not just because he's seen it, but because he has lived it. The Bible declares, for do we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize. Come on, somebody. He sympathizes and he empathizes with everything you're experiencing and going through right now. He can, a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. But he was in all points tempted as we are in every way. Jesus was tempted, he was tested, just as we are. Yet he was without sin. And because he knows experientially the pain of rejection, the pain of being misunderstood, the pain of being abandoned, ah, the pain of being abused, everything, he was in all points tempted. Because he sees and knows, notice the text, let us therefore, let us therefore come boldly without hesitation or reservation. Let us come boldly to his throne of grace. The throne of God is not a throne of judgment. It is a throne of grace, a throne of grace toward his sons and his daughters. A throne of grace where we receive what we don't deserve. And it says that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. In 2022, when you give Jesus the boat, the grace of God will abound toward you so that you can find grace and obtain mercy in our time of need. Mercy 
Mercy is when you don't get what you deserved. You deserved condemnation. But the mercy of God says, no. Mercy is when we don't get what we deserve. Grace, come on somebody, is when we get what we don't deserve. Mercy, when we don't get what we deserve. Grace, when we get what we don't deserve. And both are found in Jesus when we give him the boat. So I don't know which side of the equation you're on. Whether you're needing mercy in 22 or you're needing grace in 22 and in 20, or you're needing both. Come on, somebody. I got both of my hands raised. I need the mercy of God and the grace of God. Both are available to you when you're given the boat. Third and finally, because he sees, because he knows, and because he cares. Woo! In fact, notice what 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7 says in the amplified rendering. It says, casting the whole of your care. All your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. For he cares for you affectionately and he cares about you watchfully. I'll read that again because somebody needs to hear that. I'll read that again for good measure. I think every word now needs to resonate in the heart of the Simon Peters who are watching this broadcast. You've toiled all night. You've toiled all year. You've toiled all decade. For some, you might be even saying, I've struggled and toiled painfully all my life. But in 2022, notice Proverbs 10 and 22. Come on, somebody. Woo! I don't know where that came from. Uh, Proverbs 10, 22. In 2022, that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow with it. In the New Living Translation, that verse reads that the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no painful toil to it. May that be your testimony, your experience this year. Notice 1 Peter 5 and 7 again from the Amplified and this is where I close. Casting the whole of your care. What, what are your cares? Notice all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all. This is important. Don't give it to him and then take it back. Don't give it to him and then take it back. Give it to him once and for all. The more familiar rendering of this verse simply says, casting all of your burdens upon the Lord because he cares for you. How does he care for you? He cares for you affectionately, and cares about you watchfully. His heart toward you is affectionate and it is watchful. What is man that you are mindful of him and that you care for him? Listen to me. In 2022, beloved, as you surrender your life, as you surrender your boat to Jesus, he will not only carry your cares, he will not only carry your worries and your anxieties. You will not only experience the peace of God, but you will also experience the supernatural, super abundant, net breaking, listen to me, net breaking, net busting, head swimming blessings of God in 2022 because Jesus is in the boat, in the places where you came up empty, in the places where you experience futility, you will experience fruitfulness because Jesus is in the boat. I don't want to get ahead of myself. That's week two. The net breaking, the net busting, the overabundant provision of God and the capacity for you to receive it. We'll talk about that next week. But this is where we close with this singular thought. And I alluded to it earlier in the message, but I want you to hear it as a bookend to this message as we close. When you give Jesus the boat, your doubts and disappointments become destiny defining moments. I'll say that again. When you give Jesus the boat, your doubts. Peter had doubts and your disappointments 
Peter had disappointments become destiny defining moments. Because of Peter's obedience, his life and the trajectory of his life shifted from being a fisher man to becoming a fisher of men. Because when we give Jesus our boat, our life, our doubts and disappointments become destiny defining moments. If you're watching this broadcast and you've never allowed Jesus into your boat, maybe you've been in close proximity to Jesus. You both are at the Lake Gennesaret. You're both uh, by the shores of the lake. Jesus is doing his thing. The multitudes are doing their thing, but you're fixated on your doubts and disappointments. You're washing your empty nets. You've left your empty boat, but you've never invited Jesus into your boat. I want to pray for you. If that's you, in this moment, I want to pray for you. Uh, you, 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 you. You might be watching and you say, yeah, there was a time when I let Jesus in the boat. But, ah, you know, life happens and I kicked him out of the boat. And I don't walk as closely with Jesus as I once did. I want to pray for you as well. So we can set the trajectory and we can rightly align our lives with the purpose and plan of God in 2022. If that's you, pray this simple prayer with me. Pray this simple prayer with me from your heart with conviction. We believe with our hearts and we confess with our mouths unto salvation. Pray this prayer with me. And Converge Nation, why don't we all pray this prayer together in solidarity, in solidarity with those who are inviting Jesus into the boat for the first time and those who are inviting Jesus back into the boat so that 2022 will be a year where the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no painful toil with it. Let us pray. Dear God, say this after me now. Dear God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I acknowledge that I need you in my boat. I need you to be the Lord of my life. I acknowledge my need for a savior. Only you, Jesus, can do that for me because you died on the cross and on the third day you rose again. I believe that you are the son of God and that you died and you rose on the third day to make me whole. I receive you now, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I invite you into the boat. I invite you to be the captain of the boat. And I invite you to take all of my doubts, all of my disappointments, and make them destiny-defining moments. Because in 2022, I believe I receive and I declare that there is more. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, somebody. If you prayed that simple prayer in faith, you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God, according to Colossians. You are now born again, not born of water, not born of the flesh, but born of the spirit. Uh, we would like to send you some resources to help you kickstart your walk with the Lord. And again, help you rightly align 2022 so that everything in your life is in its proper place. Uh, send us a, an email to echurch at weareconverged.com. Our team will send you those resources. If you need a free Bible, we'll get that to you as well. And again, uh, we'll keep you posted and let you know uh, when it's time for us to resume in-person worship gatherings again. Until then, pray with us daily during our 21 days of prayer and fasting, which will end on Sunday, January 3rd, 23rd uh, at 3.20, 3.20 p.m. each day, right where you are, uh, as a dedicated time to join us uh, in corporate prayer. Listen, we love you. We appreciate you. And God's best highest and best is yours this year because
there is more. We'll see you next week. God bless you. If you were impacted by today's worship experience, we'd love to hear from you. Maybe today's sermon was exactly what you needed to hear, or you prayed the prayer of salvation for the first time. If so, we've got some information that we'd love to send you to help kickstart your relationship with God. Or if you want more information on how to join our virtual family, please email us at echurch at weareconverged.com. If you'd like to partner with us financially, you can do so online safely and securely by visiting www.weareconverged.com forward slash give. Or you can give via text by texting Converge Give along with the dollar amount that you'd like to donate to 77977. Also, you can find all this information on our mobile app. Simply search the app or the Play Store for Converge Church Plano and download the app. It's that easy. Thank you again for joining us for today's worship experience. We look forward to staying connected with you.